Hello, my friends. Happy Sunday to all of you. Top Democratic lawmakers are now criticizing Senators Joe Manchin and Chris and Sinema for opposing President Biden's legislative agenda. The Biden administration is finally moving forward with executive orders. This means that more financial aid will be sent out immediately. So, friends, please make sure that you watch until the end of this video for all of the details. Also, I will be giving away a $75 Walmart gift card every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sundays. To enter any of the giveaways, simply click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. Remember, friends, that the more often you comment below a keyword on a video, the greater your chance of winning the $75 gift card. Foods like pork, chicken, and beef have spiked dramatically. And while some may point solely to inflation for these increased prices, there is once again a larger systemic problem. In the meatpacking industry, for example, the top four companies are estimated to control up to 85% of the industry. And in industries all across the economy, the story is the same. Three firms control 93% of the soft drink industry. Three firms control 85% of the baby formula industry. Three firms control 93% of the baby food industry. Four firms control 79% of the beer industry. These firms, three firms control 79% of the dry pasta industry. And three firms control 73% of the cereal industry. If history has taught us anything, this kind of market consolidation hurts product quality, market competition, and worker safety. All the things we need to have an equitable economy. As simply put by President Biden, capitalism without competition is exploitation. So as we look to recover from this pandemic, and in a way that creates an economy that works for everyone, for the people of this country, we need to hold these monopolistic giants accountable. To start, Congress must pass the big oil windfall profit tax. Companies that have taken advantage of this moment and have taken advantage of the American people. Here is an update on state stimulus checks. New Mexico Governor Michelle Lujan Grissom has officially signed House Bill 163. This is legislation that includes many of the governor's priorities intended to keep more money in the pockets of residents of New Mexico, including exempting Social Security income from taxation and cutting the state's gross receipt tax rate for the first time in 40 years. The bill eliminates taxation on Social Security, saving New Mexico seniors over $84 million next year. The bill also includes a cap for exemption eligibility of $100,000 for single filers and $150,000 for married couples who file jointly. In addition, House Bill 163 cuts the state's gross receipt tax rate by an eighth of a percentage starting July 1, 2022. It also ramps up to a quarter percent reduction on July 1, 2023, saving New Mexico businesses and consumers nearly $200 million when fully implemented. So in all, the bill is expected to provide about $400 million of recurring tax relief benefiting all New Mexico residents. It also includes a new refundable child tax credit of up to $175 per child, which will save New Mexico families $74 million annually. There is also a one-time refundable income tax rebate of $500 for married couples filing jointly with incomes under $150,000, and then $250 for single filers with incomes under $75,000. This will save New Mexico residents about $312 million. Senate Majority Leader Peter Wirth has told reporters, this legislation provides much needed tax relief for New Mexico families, seniors, nurses, and veterans. It reduces the gross receipt tax for the first time in 40 years which is a critical first step towards a comprehensive tax reform that New Mexico needs. Now, friends, today Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders also called out two moderate Democratic senators for blocking key aspects of President Biden's legislative agenda. In an interview on NBC News, Senator Bernie Sanders singled out Senators Joe Manchin of West Virginia and Chris Sinema of Arizona for their resistance to Democrats' nearly $2 trillion climate and social spending legislation. Bernie Sanders stated, It should not be a head-scratcher. You've got two members of the Senate 
Senator Manchin, and Senator Sinema, who have resisted what the president has been fighting for. You've got 48 members of the Senate who wanted to go forward with an agenda that helped working families. Senator Manchin and Senator Sinema have both opposed key elements of the Build Back Better package. The pair have also opposed changing the 50-50 Senate 60-vote threshold for advancing legislation to allow Democrats to pass other legislative priorities. As chair of the Senate Budget Committee, Bernie Sanders has been a major player in the Build Back Better plan. Senator Sanders has suggested he would back progressive primary challenges to Senator Joe Manchin and Kristen Sinema, who are both up for re-election in 2024, if they both continue to oppose the bill. Friends, the keyword for this video is peppermint. If you would like to enter today's Walmart gift card giveaway, please click and like several of my videos and then comment below this keyword, which is peppermint, and additional keywords of any video of mine that you watch. And friends, please make sure that you're also subscribed to my channel. Democrats definitely need to take action as soon as possible. A new NBC News poll shows that President Biden's job approval rating has dipped to another low, with just 39% of Americans approving of the job that he's doing and 56% disapproving. Americans are dinging the U.S. president on inflation, the economy, and border security, as they have been for much of his presidency. According to the poll, only 37% of Americans view Biden in a positive light. President Biden appears to have lost ground once again after making some gains. Earlier this month, 42% of Americans approved of his job in a Washington Post ABC News poll, which was up five percentage points from a previous poll taken in February. But only 33% of Americans approve of his handling of the economy, and only 23% approve of his handling of inflation and the cost of living. These are two issues that are likely to be among the most important at the ballot box in November. So my friends, what are your thoughts right now on how President Biden is handling the U.S. economy? Please let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Well, my wonderful and amazing friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video. Thank you so very, very much for joining me here today. I greatly appreciate all of you who are watching my videos daily. Please remember to share this video with your friends and family if they need more reliable and accurate stimulus information. In a video later today, I will be announcing the winner of today's Walmart gift card giveaway. So friends, please do stay tuned.